we've talked a little bit about the air traffic control world. Now let's talk about the actual um, clearances that you get um, from ATC. Um, and I'm going to kind of run you through a few different scenarios, namely tower controlled environments and then non towered or uncontrolled airport environments, and how you pick up your air traffic control clearance and what that's going to sound like. And we're going to just kind of run through some of that. Again, more of this is beyond the scope of the written test, but just helping you uh, to understand what you need to know as an IFR pilot and to aid you in your training. Okay, so first of all, we, we should know that pilots always read back all clearances and instructions from ATC especially anything with numbers in it altitudes headings things like that you have to repeat back uh, to them now let's talk about how you go through getting your clearance at a tower controlled airport that that means this is the script that you and the controller in the air traffic control world is going to agree upon it's your route it's your altitudes it's the departure frequency that you're going to need to first contact the initial controller um, and it's the squawk code that you'll put into your transponder uh, as well that's what a clearance will be now eventually you will also need to get in contact with air traffic control to get permission to enter into the airspace to come on in but this is initially just the scripted clearance so that you know what you're doing and you know how to set up your radios, your nav, and all of your waypoints and your GPS if you're using GPS or VOR setup. So let's look at a tower controlled environment. How does this kind of go down? Okay, let me just give, kind of give you this in simple form. Uh, first of all, at a tower controlled airport, they really provide a nice service to you as a pilot. So one of the first things that you can do is you can call up ground control or if there's a clearance delivery you would use that. That would always be the preference if there's a clearance delivery frequency you use that to pick up your IFR clearance and in the absence of that you would just go directly to ground control and you would like you would say that you would like to pick up your IFR clearance now for some pilots they have already started the engine they've obviously pre-flighted gone through their checklist started the engine maybe even some of them may taxi to the runway and pick up their clearance in the run-up area um, some of them if you have two pilots on board they're gonna be while they're taxiing one pilot who's not taxiing the airplane uh, will be working the radios and he'll request uh, the clearance. You can also request the clearance before you even start the engine, but most of the time they're not used to that. So if you do that, you want to let them know that you are pre-startup or you're pre-engine startup. You would like to pick up your clearance. And that way you can have, maybe have a little time, especially while you're newer at this, to kind of comb over things without the pressure of the meter running, the, the money meter, the Hobbs meter, right, that's running. Uh, as well as just a general sense of I got to go, I got to go. But as you gain more experience and as you fly routes that are more known to you and familiar, you'll probably know what to expect. This can all adjust a little bit. But so, for example, you might be able to, you know, call up clearance delivery or ground control and say, ground, this is Cessna, Cherokee, whatever. I am pre-engine start. I would like to put my IFR clearance on request. Okay. On request means that what has to happen is unless unless it's a clearance delivery type of tower where they have that, they will be immediately ready to fire back your clearance to you. So if it is a clearance delivery, be ready to copy because they'll just, brrr, here you go. So have your pen or pencil in hand ready to copy or if you're scratching it onto your iPad or whatever with your finger, um, be ready to copy it if you have a clearance delivery. In that case, you would just call clearance delivery and say, I'd like to pick up my IFR clearance now they'll give it to you. Uh, if it's ground control, they don't usually have it right there immediately. So they have to call up approach control, TRACON, and they have to put that clearance request to them, of which then they get it from them, and then they will communicate that to you. So you can put the IFR clearance on request, and they'll say, okay, Cessna, let's say it's Cessna 2458 Mike, uh, IFR clearance is on request. And then you want to say, if you still need to pre-flight or do some stuff, you shut down the master switch, just let them know, uh, I'm going to be going off the frequency and I'll call you back for the clearance. Eh, okay, roger that. You know, Just let them know. Otherwise, they expect that you're going to be on the frequency when they try calling you once they get the clearance. Okay, so they need to, if it's not a clearance, if they have a clearance delivery, 
then they have it immediately for you and they will read it to you and then you read it back to them. We're going to go over all that in just a minute, just a minute, just giving you the overview. Uh, if it's no clearance delivery and you're just talking to ground control, they will need to put in a call to approach Tracon and they will need to get it relayed to them and then they will relay to you the clearance. That takes a little bit of time. So sometimes I've, uh, with a student, you know, let them know that I'll be going off frequency and I'll call back for the clearance in a little bit. Once you call back, you might say, is my clearance ready? And then you say, yep, are you ready to copy? You're ready to copy and you'll jot those things down. Once you have your clearance, Again, that's a set of you know your routing instructions, your altitudes, and so forth. Then the next thing is when you're ready to taxi, you contact ground control, you taxi to the runway, and you do your run-up, all that stuff. You set up your radios, your you know comms, your navs, your your GPS, everything set up for the trip. Then when you are ready, now again with experience, you might just get all the way out to the run-up area and say, "I'm ready to copy my FR clearance." Sometimes, by the way, you might be taxiing your airplane, and ground control might say, "Hey, you're you're ready to copy. I have your clearance for you." just got it you would probably be best to say standby okay especially if you're the you know, only person there um, the only crew member say standby get to the run-up area stop put the parking brake on now I'm ready to copy you know uh, but once you have your clearance you're at the run-up area you've done your run-up everything's set up your radios are set up you're ready for the flight you would go over switch over to tower and let them know that you're ready for IFR takeoff okay and that's what you would say ready for IFR departure we're ready for IFR takeoff I like to use the word IFR in there just to make sure the tower remembers they should know they get the handoff from ground control to you they know that you're coming they know that but it's just in case I just want to underscore the fact that I am an IFR departure at that point the uh, local controller the tower controller will need to call Tracon or center I should say as well so if you're inside again a B or C vicinity if you're in that area then it's defaults to Tracon as we said if not then you'll be in centers airspace but the tower will need to call up those controllers and say hey I've got November 2458 Mike he's ready for IFR release and then they have to wait they have to wait for the controller to give them the green light the go-ahead because there has to be an available spot in the sky for you because there might be a lot of other air traffic going on so the controller, your tower controller, when you ask for IFR takeoff, will usually respond with this phrase, Cessna 2458 Mike Roger, waiting for IFR release. Okay, waiting for IFR release. Meaning, I am now contacting approach or Tracon or departure control, and I am going to speak to them to get you a window. Now, when they have that window to release you into the system, then they call the tower controller and say, okay, he's good to go. They'll give him a little time frame, like you need to get him out in a couple, two, three, five minutes, whatever it is. Um, but they don't, the tower doesn't tell you that information. You don't need to know that information. When the tower gets your go ahead, they will just say Cessna 2458 Mike, runway 30, you are cleared for takeoff. They may give you a, uh, an instruction for leaving, like turn, after departure, turn right heading 050. Or just uh, after departure, fly runway heading, runway 30, you are cleared for takeoff. They will give you some type of instruction as to what to do after your takeoff. But once you get that clearance for takeoff, you want to get moving. You shouldn't have other things to fuss with or do. Everything should be pretty well ready. Just like any time tower says cleared for takeoff, you don't want to be fussing around too much um, because they are tight on their separation sometimes and their sequencing. So you get need to get moving. Plus, the approach controllers are expecting you to get into the sky pretty soon. Okay, You can hear me saying approach controller when... In this case, it's departure, departure control, but it's the same people. It's the same Tracon, or if, again, there's no Tracon, then it, you'll be going directly to center. Um, you take off, and then the tower will switch you over to the departure control in case of Tracon. If not, then it's to center, and they will confirm that frequency. You know, contact center now, 132.4, whatever. So that's just a quick kind of run through of what it might feel like at a tower controlled airport. Again, if I have clearance delivery, then I'm going to contact them. But if you do have clearance delivery, be ready to copy because they will immediately rattle back your clearance for you. And um, if no clearance delivery, then you contact ground, in which case there's a slight delay. They will put your IFR clearance on request is the comment. And then a little bit later, they will be able to issue you that clearance. I suggest that you're stopped 
and possibly even not having even started the engine yet to receive that clearance and have time to kind of set everything up. There's no time timer on it. There's no timetable that you have to get moving. You can receive that clearance. And then once you're ready to taxi, you would ask them for taxi instructions to the runway ground control. And then when you're ready for takeoff, you say, I'm uh, ready for IFR takeoff. They will say waiting for IFR release. Once they get the green light, they will clear you for takeoff. Then they will switch you over to departure or center and you are on your way. Let's talk about what happens at an uncontrolled airport or non-towered is better probably term for it.